So in these series of videos, I'm attempting to answer some of the questions that I've been asked the most these last four years of making videos on tinnitus. I've been asked these questions in comments, on email and on my social media, and probably the number one question that I've been asked the most for obvious reasons is, how bad is my tinnitus? How bad out of 10? Do I have pulsating tinnitus? Do I have one tone? Um, is it chronic? Is it severe? Those types of questions. Now, this is one of the few questions that I've been very hesitant to answer. And I wanna start off by apologizing to anyone that may have asked me this question and I've not replied. Um, I wanna explain why I've not replied and why I've been very reluctant to reply to this question. First and foremost, reason number one, I really want the information that I share in these videos to hopefully be applicable to anyone who is struggling or in need of information about tinnitus. And I feel that if I put too much of a label on my own tinnitus, it might exclude some people. What I mean is this, if I say that my tinnitus is this out of 10, then some people might think, well, that's, that's way more than mine is, therefore the information doesn't apply to me. Or some people might say, well, that's way less than mine, so it might not apply to me. And I think that would be a shame because I, I share this information with a genuine desire to help um, and a genuine desire to create a form of community that was not there back in 2016 when I was really struggling. So I'm reluctant to answer this question replying to a comment because I don't want to exclude anybody. I really hope that this information in some way is helpful to anyone that needs this information in the videos that I make. And reason number two, a very, very close, <laughs> close reason number two is, it's a big question to ask me, and it's not a question that I can answer easily. Tinnitus has been a big part of my life. The last seven years after I got my first major spike have been tricky. It's been a tough mountain for me to climb. I've had tinnitus for since I was 27. I'm 49 now. Thank you for the birthday messages the other day, by the way. Um, so it's been 22 years. And for the last seven years, it's been tricky. It's been, it's been, it's been tough. So my relationship to tinnitus is complex. It's not simple. And it's not something that I can just give a number out of 10 or a quick reply to a comment. It's way more complicated than that. And that's why I've been reluctant to answer the question. But I understand why people ask me this question and that's why I want to try and as briefly as I can answer the question in this video. Okay, I got tinnitus at 27, it was mild. I would say that it was a three or a max of four out of 10. I'm a very mentally strong person and I'm a workaholic. So when I got tinnitus back then, all I did was nothing. I just carried on because I just accepted it and just carried on as normal. Gigging, performing, I'm a musician, if, anyone, if you don't know this. Uh, so I just gigged, I recorded, uh, and it didn't really affect my life. But I wouldn't advise you to do that if you are watching this and you have mild tinnitus, because I think it was the wrong thing to do in some ways, because I think that anyone who's watching this and they have mild tinnitus, I would advise you to not do what I did. I was an idiot. I didn't do anything. I would advise you to get your hearing checked, go to see an audiologist, speak to them, try and see an audiologist that is tinnitus specific, and also begin to consider taking your hearing protection seriously. Be when you're in loud situations such as concerts, cinemas, uh, parties, that sort of thing, because I did none of that and I think it was the wrong thing to do. That was at the start. Also, back then I was a gig to gig type of musician and I couldn't really afford professional help. I live in Norway, it's a very expensive country and I didn't really know if I had any rights to any sort of help. So I didn't inquire and therefore I did nothing about it. I didn't see anyone. Uh, and like I say, I think that was a mistake. When I was 36, I went through my first major spike and that was, it was scary. It was um, very tricky. And then in 2016, 2017, um, I went through another major spike 
And that's when I started to take it really seriously. I started to do a lot of research. Uh, I developed all the tools that I share in my videos. And I did it by myself because there just wasn't much information on the, on the internet that was applicable to me. I saw one guy, he was a guitarist, who talked about who talked about earplugs because he had tinnitus. And I'm the kind of guy that gets involved, so I emailed the guy, but he wasn't very willing to talk to me about his tinnitus. So there just wasn't much information. So I developed all the tools that I talk about in my videos and I write about in my books. I did them by myself. I didn't copy them or, well, there was no one to copy, to be honest with you. So I just developed these tools and these are the tools that I share. Over the last seven years, um, my tinnitus has got progressively worse. It's manageable, but it's manageable because I'm very proactive. I'm very, very into all the information that I share. I don't share this information to get clicks or likes or video views or whatever. I share it because I have to live it every day myself. That's how I manage to cope. So to say, you know, to say specifically where I am in 2024, I would say that I have severe tinnitus. I'm not going to put a number out of 10 because I think that's futile, but I have severe chronic tinnitus. It's not intermittent. It doesn't go away. I don't wake up some days where it's not there. That just, <laughs> that just doesn't exist for me. It's there all the time. I go through good spells and the good spells are the majority of the time. Uh, and when I'm going through a good spell, I, I just go about my life. My life. I live a full, you know, engaged life. I'm a musician. I do music. I record music. I write music. I perform music. I live a full life regardless of my severe tinnitus. When I'm going through a bad spell, which happens maybe, I don't know, you can't put a number on these things, but let's just say three times a year, two, three times a year, I go through a bad spell. I just been through a bad spike a couple of months ago and I made a video about it. If I'm going through a bad spell, I double down on all the tools that I mention in my videos, comfort tools, distractions, um, taking a break, reducing stress, making sure my sleep patterns are good, all the things that I talk about in my videos, all very obvious things, but sometimes we need to be reminded. So that's what I do when I'm going through a bad spell. But on the whole, I have very loud, very severe, not very severe, but severe tinnitus. Like I say, I'm not gonna put a number on it because I don't wanna start that game, but it's loud, it's constant. I've started to experience pulsating tinnitus. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but it started to happen about six months ago, specifically when I'm working, when I'm mixing. It's not a very pleasant feeling. It lasts for about two or three minutes and then it goes away, thank God. Um, so I understand how pulsating tinnitus feels like now. Um, I often get asked, do I have one tone or do I have multiple tones? I wouldn't call it so much a tone. I would call it a bandwidth. Remember, I'm a musician and I do mixing. So it's, it's one tone, it's constant, but it's more of a, it's not one single tone, it's more of a bandwidth, meaning that it's more of a, a hum, like a, like a, I'd say a pointed hum like that. And it's around the 2K area, so the speech area. So that's why I reduce my um, time on the phone. I don't particularly enjoy hearing people's voices on the phone. If I have to do meetings, I plug a pair of headphones into my computer and I have the headphones on the desk, not on my head. So they're about half a meter away from me. And I can hear people's voices through the headphone speakers that are on the desk. It's really important that they're not on my head. They're on the desk and I can hear it that way because I find that the headphone speakers are softer than computer speakers. I find that voices through computer speakers aggravate my tinnitus because my tinnitus gets aggravated around the 2K area. So that's where the voice is. Um, yeah, so my sleep gets interrupted intermittently. Some, so I go through bad spells and then I go through good spells, um, mostly good spells. Um, and if I am going through bad spells, I do all the stuff that I, t I spoke about in the video that I made about sleep, um, exercise. I put, yeah, it's better to watch the video because uh, it's, I, I go into detail there. So that's where my tinnitus is now. It, it's been quite stable-ish these last couple of years, which I'm incredibly grateful for. I hope it stays there. Um, but, you know, it's complicated because I'm a professional musician, so I have to be very proactive. 
I'm very social. I like to be social. Um, I think being social is important, but it means I have to be organized. I have to wear earplugs, ear defense if I'm traveling. I live a very full life, regardless of my severe tinnitus. But I do that because I'm proactive with my hearing protection. I'm proactive with my mental health, with exercise, making sure I get enough fresh air, making sure that I have comfort tools. I enjoy my life. So that's very important, I think, for people with severe tinnitus. So I think I've explained why this is difficult for me to reply in a quick comment. And again, I want to apologize to anyone that's asked me this question and it seems like I've ignored your question. Perhaps now you see why I didn't reply because it's complicated and I apologize to anyone in advance in the future that might ask me the question and hasn't seen this video. I hope that you eventually come across this video so you see why I haven't replied. Um, but that's where my tinnitus is now. Um, yes, and I think I'll leave it there because it's already 11 minutes. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. I'm going to answer some more questions going forward. There's been quite a few, quite a lot of questions over the last four years, and I will get around to answering them um, in the following weeks. But for now, I want to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.